Okay, let's continue. This is S5 history. We're still talking about the Industrial Revolution. Today, we are trying to shed light on class tensions and the reforms that were introduced eventually um, in England. So a good example of a reformer, another reformer is Lord Shaftesbury, uh, also called Lord Ashley. He was a politician and a reformer. He was instrumental in, in improving conditions in the mines and factories. So he was somebody who was responsible for the passage of laws that improved the working conditions, you know, in uh, industrial areas. And we have to understand that these reforms, some of these reforms were introduced because many of the leaders at that time were afraid of revolution. So instead of making people angry and uh, contributing or furthering their dissatisfaction, they thought that it must be better to simply introduce reforms. So for instance, the Factory Acts, we already mentioned this before, you know, in the early 19th century, as these factories were becoming more common, Parliament actually invited uh, different people to sort of testify, to give testimony uh, uh, with regard to the conditions in the mines and the factories. And then eventually, given these findings, they passed laws, okay? They created laws, um, among them the Factory Acts. For instance, the first one, um, or it's a series of laws, by the way. So the first ones uh, stipulated that, or stated that, uh, children under 13 should not work more than uh, 55 hours a week. And they had to attend school at least two hours a week. And those under nine shouldn't even work. Okay, if you're, if you're less than nine years old, you shouldn't be in the factory. If you were a teenager, uh, about 13 to 17 years old, you know, your maximum was 12 hours of work a day. And inspectors were appointed, inspectors who had to go around, visit factories, and make sure that the law was being followed. And then in 1842, you have the Mines Acts. So women and children under 13 were not allowed to work in the mines. Two years after, in 1844, women were only allowed 12 hours per day, while children could work a maximum of 6.5 hours. Eventually, uh, after a few years, in 1847, as you can see, these reforms, you know, came every couple of years or so. Uh, the 10 Hours Act of 1847, uh, women and children under 18 could only work for a maximum of 10 hours a day in the factories. Now, you know, it, it wouldn't be entirely true to say that all of these laws were created, were passed, uh, just out of the goodness of people's hearts. No, there, there was an economic motive, you know, men wanted certain jobs for themselves so this was part of it because factory owners preferred women and children you know more you know more men were you know not didn't have jobs in the factories so to ensure that they did they introduced laws like this now another aspect this is probably something that you don't think about uh, but, you know, before 1825, trade unions, so associations of workers um, and, you know, and, and, uh, and other professionals, these were banned, these were illegal, okay? But 
even when they became legal in 1825, they were they saw little success. Why? Because they were seen as a threat to societal stability and order. But then in 1825, the Combination Acts, meaning uh, laws that made it legal for, for people to organize, for, for workers to gather, they became illegal. Okay, So with trade unions, you see workers had bargaining power. Why? Because they could uh, negotiate collectively together you know, with the, the owners of a factory, for instance. So they could demand, they can, they could ask for higher pay, for instance, better conditions. And then in eighteen, in the eighteen seventies, trade unions, trade organizations, uh, workers' unions, they won the right to demonstrate to to strike. Okay. Now we come upon the conclusion of our discussion of the industrial revolution so in in broad terms we have to talk about the effects of the industrial revolution and fortunately many of the consequences many of the effects were positive you know thanks to the industrial revolution jobs were created people had jobs um, these jobs, of course, contributed to the economy, to the wealth of the nation. Because of greater demand and because of, you know, wanting greater efficiency in terms of production and also the desire for profit, you know, this gave people motivation to invent, to keep on making things better and better to try and improve things also at the same time eventually thanks to the industrial revolution to all of these changes that we've discussed there was in, there was an increase in the standard of living okay people saw that okay you can your you know your lifestyle your living conditions can actually improve people began to have diets that were healthier Eventually, people began to live in better houses. Uh, they had access to cheaper clothing. And since there was, a, there was great demand for people who were skilled, for instance, engineers, you know, uh, drafters, uh, all sorts of people, even supervisors and uh, you know, people who could work the machines in factories, etc. So be, since there was a greater demand for them, they had to be trained. So, you know, this period saw the rise of educational opportunities. Of course, these things did not happen instantly. You know, it took a while for workers to benefit from this for them to get higher wages, shorter working hours, and eventually better working conditions. Now, the long-term effects, the effects that you know we still feel until today, people began to have access to consumer goods. So what used to be luxuries were, became ordinary, became more accessible to people, okay? Um, in general, improved living and working conditions. And, you know, as, as for instance, a country like uh, England and also Belgium, as they industrialized, you know, people became wealthier. And of course, that meant that the government could expect more taxes or, you know, you could tax wealth. So that wealth became revenue for the government and that meant if the government uh, had more money and that government, you know, had concern for its citizens, so it it would use that wealth to um, improve conditions in the cities and towns. 
And in general, that's what happened. Okay? These are the positive effects of the Industrial Revolution.